Well, hello everyone and welcome to our video lesson on the topic of osmosis. Now, I wonder if you've been thinking about some of the questions that I left you the last time. Some real-life applications of osmosis. For instance, strawberries. Uh, I just had some strawberries the other day. When you buy them from the supermarket, they're quite nice and firm. Or they're turgid in that sense. However, in order to make jam, you need to soften the strawberries. So what some people do is that they sprinkle lots of sugar on the strawberries and they allow the strawberries to sit in the sugar for some time. Now this is really a real life application of osmosis. So I'll come back again to this at the end. I hope that you can apply whatever you've learned about osmosis to this scenario to explain why is it that when we sprinkle strawberries with sugar, they actually turn soft and we can crush them to form jam. Now in the rest of this lesson, we'll be covering mainly what is the effect of osmosis on animal and plant cells? What happens when we place animal cells and plant cells into different environments? So let's have a look. So let's start with plant cells and the effect of osmosis on plant cells. Now imagine I took a plant cell and I placed it in a very concentrated solution, right? So maybe a very high percentage of salt or starch or sucrose solution. In this case, the water potential of the solution is low, right? Because it's a very concentrated solution. So the water potential of the solution is probably lower than the water potential of the cell sap, right? The cell sap uh, is the fluid that is found inside the vacuole. Now, as a result, because the water potential of the solution is lower than the cell set, water molecules will move out of the cell by osmosis. And this will cause the cell to become less turgid, right? Turgid means firm, right? And the cell becomes plasmalized, right? This is a very special term that we use for plant cells. The cell becomes plasmalized. So what happens when the plant cell becomes plasmalized? Well, firstly, it shrinks. It becomes smaller because water moves out of it. Secondly, it becomes flaccid. Flaccid means not turgid. It becomes flaccid and limp, so a bit softer in a sense. And interestingly, we also see that the cytoplasm and the cell membrane will shrink away from the cell wall. So the cell wall is here. The cytoplasm and cell membrane have shrunk away. So here is the cytoplasm. It has moved away from the cell uh, from the cell wall, and here is the cell membrane, which has also shrunk away from this cell wall. So here's the cell membrane. I'll just outline it in red. Here's the cell membrane. Now in class, someone asked me what is found in these spaces here, where the cytoplasm used to be. Now, because the cell wall is fully permeable and allows all substances to pass in and out, this space here will be filled by the surrounding solution. Alright, so this is plant cell in concentrated solution. Now, what happens when we place a plant cell in distilled water? So, you need to think about water potential again. And the water potential of distilled water is higher than the water potential of the cell sap because the cell sap contains not only water but some dissolved substances. Right? So it has maybe some dissolved sugars, uh, some dissolved nutrients. Right? However, the distilled water outside is just distilled water. So there's a higher water potential. And as a result, water molecules will move in to the cell by osmosis through the cell membrane. And we say that the cell expands and becomes turgid. So you can see now the appearance of the cell, it looks expanded and it's very firm. If you could touch it, you would see that it's very firm. It's very turgid. Now as we'll see later, animal cells in distilled water will burst. 
But why do plant cells not burst? Right? Water can move into the cell, but the cell doesn't burst. Well, it's something to do with the difference between plant cells and animal cells. What is the structure in the plant cell that is not found in the animal cell? If you're thinking the cell wall, then you're, got, you're getting close. Right? It is the cell wall that prevents plant cells from bursting. Right? So water can move in. However, the cell wall prevents this cell from bursting. Now what happens if we place a plant cell in a solution where the water potential is equal to the cell sap? Well, in this case, the water potential of the solution around is equal to the water potential of the cell sap. Therefore, no osmosis occurs. However, question, do water molecules still move? Well, the answer is yes, and as you can see from the diagram, water still moves in and out of the cell. But there's an equal number of water molecules moving in as water molecules moving out. This is equal. So there is no visible change to the cell. There is no osmosis. There is no net movement of water molecules. So let's do a quick recap on animal cells as well, since I went through this quite quickly in class. So what is the effect of osmosis on animal cells? If I place an animal cell, and we like to use the example of red blood cells, if I place a red blood cell in a very concentrated solution, well, the water potential of the solution is lower than the water potential of the cytoplasm in the cell, right? because it's very concentrated outside. So as a result, how do water molecules move? Water molecules move out of the cell by osmosis, and this causes the cell to shrink. Right? The word shrink is enough. If you want to go further, it causes the cell to crenate. Now what happens when you place an animal cell into distilled water? In this case, as with the plant cell, the water potential of distilled water is higher than the water potential of the cytoplasm. This causes water molecules to move into the cell by osmosis. And what happens is the cell expands, and because there is no cell wall, it bursts. Kaput! Right, and all the inner cytoplasm leaks out into a drastic, terrible mess. Very unfortunate. Now finally, what happens if the water potential is equal? Well, in this case, the water potential of the solution is equal to the water potential of the cytoplasm. No osmosis occurs, as in the plant cell, so water moves in, water moves out in equal amounts. So there's no visible change, no net movement of water molecules. Do the water molecules still move? Yes, but equal numbers in and equal numbers out. Alright, we're coming to the end of the video. And we have seen the effect of different types of solutions on animal cells and on plant cells. Now the rest of osmosis is really about applying what we've just learned to many new and different situations. For example, the situation of a strawberry. Now I've imagined if I've got a strawberry here. Why is it that if I surround it with a lot of sugar, that it becomes soft? Apply osmosis to this. Well, there's a very high concentration of sugar around the strawberry. What does that mean about the water potential around the strawberry? It would mean that the water potential is very low, right? Compared to the inside of the strawberry. So therefore, water will move out of the strawberry, causing it to become soft. Now I want you to apply that to this question. Why is it that putting salt in a slug causes it to kind of die, causes it to dry up. And similarly, why is it that salt is such a good preservative? A hint here is how does salt kill bacteria and hence help to preserve our food? It has everything to do with osmosis. So go back, do the worksheet and also think about these interesting questions and we'll meet again soon. See you!